Hi there, Joel from Jonesies. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we left off this Camaro Resto mod build with getting the uh, vinyl top completed and then getting some of the gauges and things hooked up. And let me tell you, we have catapulted to the finish line. This is the last video in this series. Resto mod Camaro is done, so let's go around and take a good look at it. Okay, we're gonna start the tour of the finished product under the hood, so let me pop it and we will go through what we did under here. Now, as you can see, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to dress up the engine compartment. We uh, color matched the air intake tube right here, and then we built some custom, semi-custom uh, coil covers. A lot of you LS guys um, will recognize these covers as the regular Corvette LS3 covers. And as you can see, we uh, modified them a little bit, taking some fender emblems off of the later model 2011, 2012 style uh, Camaros, and then retrofitting these new covers uh, with those so that they label Camaro. Um, that stuff, I think, turned out really clean. It was reasonably easy to get those uh, coil covers to fit around the air conditioning compressor as well as the brake booster and it just kind of dresses up the engine just enough. So uh, a lot of this hasn't changed too much since the last uh, video of what you guys saw, um, but it's just everything is just done now. So uh, let's go around to the interior and we'll talk about what we did for interior uh, finishes. So for the interior, uh, we wanted to stick with the Resto Mod theme, but we wanted to use nothing but absolutely premium uh, components. So we went with a uh, premium leather from Veterans Upholstery Supply Company out of California, and then we also had it embossed so that it gives it a, a textured look that more mimics the uh, original Camaro seat covers. So if you come and kind of zoom in, you can see we kept the original style pleats with the contrast stitch, and then had the embossed section right in the in the main body of the of the seat, uh, retained the original style buttons up here, and then wrapped as much of this interior in leather as we possibly could. So if you come in and look really closely, you can see we used a contrast stitch right here that is more of a gold. Uh, tone. I didn't want the stitching to really, really stand out like a yellow or a green. And so we went with kind of a, a brown gold tone, which I think picks up the exterior color really well. And now uh, you can also see that it's uh, it's got the perforations, which is really nice. Now, if we move over to the center console, this was the original automatic center console, and we had to cut a big hole in the middle for our shifter. And so we just built a filler panel right there and then wrapped it in leather as well. We also took the original center console lid and wrapped that in leather also so that most of the components that you touch and feel uh, have that premium leather. So for the back seats, we uh, duplicated the same as the front, uh, keeping the perforated and embossed leather center inserts and the contrast stitch. And if you recall from our previous uh, videos, we had to install mini tubs. And in order to get everything to fit, we actually relocated the factory. The owner wanted to keep the factory seatbelts, uh, retractors. And so we relocated the actual retractor to the center section with just a pretty much a simple bracket and then retained the original GM style uh, seat belts in the rear. So moving to the back of the uh, vehicle, uh, we made a new package tray panel and we again kept with some of the embossed style theme so that it has some texture. And then we went with Custom Auto Sound and they provided us with these really cool retro speaker covers that mimics the uh, what would have been more period correct. This textured package tray cover is actually the same material that we used to rewrap the plastic insert for the headliner. As far as finishing off the trunk, 
we needed to do something because we had to install some actual trunk uh, enclosures and you can kind of see these these little triangles right here those are actually cutouts in the trunk that provide more clearance for the really large exhaust um, so we just wrapped the trunk in sound deadener as much sound deadener as we could and then we just used a one piece uh, felt and glued it down to the sound deadener and it just finishes off the trunk really nicely a lot of the Camaro purists are going to be very jealous of these door panels. These are actually the original type LT door panels on this Camaro and we just cleaned them up and kept all of the original stuff. So it has the wood grain, they don't reproduce these door panels. So these are the original components from 1973. So in keeping with the retention of as many of the original components as we could, we uh, kept the original uh, shoulder harnesses as well as the retractors on the side you can see that we have the yellow we have the yellow tape which is just there to protect the uh, sill panel and then in addition we kept the original style GM floor mats so these were also original and we cleaned them up the best we could and we actually dyed them so these are the original floor mats as well there's always a compromise on these really high-end builds where the level of attention and detail is, is such that those floor mats for some people might not be in as good a condition as they would like for a car of this caliber, but they are the original pieces and the owner wanted to retain as many of the original components of this car as he could. We went around and around trying to find the appropriate wheel and size of wheel for this build. And so what we ended up on was going with the American Racing uh, modern style rally wheels. And we had these actually custom made so that they would have the black center. So they made these wheels uh, for us with the black satin black center in 18 inches. And so <clears throat> the front and rear are both 18 inches. The rear is an 18 by 10 with a 295 wide tire. And the fronts are an 18 by eight wheel with the appropriate offset. We did end up having to run a spacer in the back in order to get the offset to be absolutely perfect. We struggled with trying to find the widest tire we could for the rear. Again, these are 18 by 10s with a half inch wheel spacer so that it fits in here really well. Now these are 295, 45, 18s, and we could actually fit a 315 and a slightly wider wheel. Again, we had these custom made, so we wanted to make sure that they were 100% going to fit. And the way this car is going to be used, a 295 is more than sufficient. Okay, now let's take a tour underneath the car and you guys can see the Art Morrison chassis, the Detroit Speed 4 Link, all of the plumbing, and then what all the other mechanicals look like underneath. So as you can see, we color matched a lot of the components on the engine, the engine is uh, painted green, transmission is painted green, and then all the rest of the components uh, kind of fluctuate back and forth between a satin black as well as a gloss black. I can't give enough praise to Art Morrison for how well this subframe fits and how well everything turned out on this build in terms of their components. Like it just worked really, really well. Everything fit really well. The wheel alignment shop was very, very satisfied with the uh, initial setup that they had in terms of where the rack was centered and all of those different components as well as the coilover. So big thanks to Art Morrison for supplying such a really good product. No, this is not a sponsored video. We, uh, the owner paid good money for good quality uh, components. Um, but if Art Morrison wants to sponsor a video, we'd be more than happy to oblige. So let's go uh, move to the rear. You can see the exhaust. We had to kind of modify the exhaust so that it would work with the um, manifolds that we ran. So we have two and a half inch pipes into the three inch uh, hooker Blackheart system. Uh, again, I alluded to some of this work in the previous a video we had to actually section this stuff so that these tubes would center up correctly in the Art Morrison subframe. 
Here you can see how we modified the original Camaro cable so that it would work with the aftermarket Willwood disc brake kit. So moving to the back, this is where things get really, really crowded. So we went with a reasonably small sway bar for the Detroit Speed Quadrilink setup. And let me tell you, when you're driving, this vehicle has no body roll whatsoever. It is extraordinarily tight. When you accelerate, it doesn't squat. And the suspension on this, on this vehicle just works absolutely wonderfully. Curry supplied us with the uh, rear differential. It was already set up complete with the Detroit Speed uh, Quadrilink bracketry. And all of those components fit and went together really, really well. So for the fuel system plumbing, we went with an aftermarket tank from Tanks, and then we plumbed it into the regular style LS regulator and filter assembly right there at the top, mounted it up as high as we possibly could. And here you can see how ridiculously tight all of these components are with the exhaust. Now that I've given you guys the walk around tour, we've gone through the car front to back. It's time for the money shot, which is startup and test drive. Test drive, so let's get buckled in and we'll head around the block. I will let the Camaro get warmed up. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the Dakota Digital gauges. Uh, these Dakota Digital gauges they integrate directly into the OBD2 connection, so all of the data that the ECM is uh, using to run the vehicle is what is being displayed. so they match the original theme, original style. Um, one thing that I kind of wish we would have been able to do is retain the wood grain on the instrument panel. Unfortunately, the original one just was not, uh, was not in good enough shape. And so we had to go with the aftermarket replacement uh, gauge bezel. So this car is just absolutely a blast to drive. The shifter for the TR6060 is perfect placement with that offset bracketry that we got from Siki. Uh, the Hurst T-handle feels really well. It's very comfortable. Like all of the user amenities in this vehicle are actually really, really well done. exhaust has a very strong aggressive tone. It does have a little bit of resonance inside the uh, cockpit here, um, but it's not that offensive. The handling is, is phenomenal. I can't wait to get everything broken in and then really take this on a windy road. Um, unfortunately, I probably won't be the one to do that because this uh, vehicle needs a lot more miles put on it before it's uh, ready to go for that aggressive of a drive. So we're gonna wind it out here a little bit. about 4,500 RPMs 
Um, again, this thing has probably a 6,500 RPM red line. There's a lot more uh, power there, but you know, I don't want to be the one that uh, breaks the new toy. So we're going to be conservative on our test drive here. button. Give us a big thumbs up and we will see you on the next build.